FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Common Sense Radio. I ain't too proud to say, but that's how I'm made. And one of you bunch of drunks. I'll be that person till my dying day. I try so hard for hard, but I can't change. He's white, but he can fight. Patrick. Welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? What's up, man? I gotta ask you a question. Yes, sir. Do you pick your bumper music? I do, yes. You gotta be just a great time to go out with and hang out with <laughs> and have a beer with and listen to some music on the back bed. Your music is so eclectic. It's great. Well, thank you so much. I love music. I adore it. I get it from my father, who was the guy who had about seven albums all stacked up on a Saturday afternoon on the uh, electrophonic. And I love music, buddy. So thank you very much for noticing, man. Thank you. So what I wanted to say, what my comment was, is I'm a 42-year-old white male from Winston, Missouri, from actually North County, and I've worked my way up uh, from... Let's say I barely got out of high school. Right. So, and I've worked my way up. And God thank this country that has given me the opportunity to prosper. And my wife as well. You know, I've owned a restaurant and, um, and I'm in sales now and sales are where it's at. So, um, we make about $130,000, $140,000 together. And I said to my friends and my wife about the second year, of uh, Bush's second term is that there is no representation for a white middle class male anymore. It's taxation without representation. I am paying, when I hear people say they're not paying their fair share, it's me that's paying $30,000 out of my $100,000 income a year that is paying the taxes so right. other people can lay around. And I'm sick of it. And I don't, told your screener, if I was a black gay woman, I'd have it made. There is nobody that represents a white, middle-class American male that has, I'm not going to say that we have built this country, but on the backs of us over the last hundred years, I would say so. Before that, it was built on the backs of, you know, cotton people down south and the Chinese that built the railroad, and we've done people wrong. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But for the last hundred years, it's built on the been built on the backs of us, and they just keep taking and taking and taking because they because the sense is somehow that you owe it that somehow you have to be the person that slogs through because you're the enemy of this country when the reality is exactly the opposite. And I'm sure there are black males who are 42, white, and married like you who also don't feel represented because they're slogging through the same way. And sure. there are Hispanic males who are 42. So, you know, the, the, but the fact of the matter is it's interesting to hear when, when people talk about Trump, how, oh, he's just popular with white males. And the problem with that is what? You know, I mean, so, again, I mean, once we start to uh, stop being color-coded here in terms of, of, of disparaging one group, it's kind of like it's, it's kind of like you only hear about how women can't stand Donald Trump. You never hear about how men can't stand Hillary Clinton. Can't stand her. My wife can't stand her to listen to her talk. She, <laughs> she can't stand to listen to her voice. Her screeching. <laughs> right. But you know what? It's, it's, it's horrible. But the tax thing is, is brutal. And, 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 Donald Trump is the one guy who's actually talked. I mean, I realize these other guys all had their economic plans, but who was out of the blocks talking about leveling the playing field with trade? Who was out of the blocks talking about uh, trying to make it easier for corporations to, uh, to to conduct business in this country? Who was out of the blocks talking about uh, deregulating? Who was out of the blocks talking about that? Donald Trump was, and he the was the guy. is not always popular. Right. And this guy, whether he's a a host of a show, a, a apprentice, reality TV, or whatever, he's telling the American people it's rigged. 
Well, yeah. And, and it's rigged, and it's a game, folks. And he's going to play the game. And he gets in there. God, please let this country turn around. I cannot take any more. And 50% <laughs> no. of us can't take any more to the point to where there's going to be some, I don't know if this is a political revolution right now. I would say it is. But there's going to, something is going to happen in this country where people can't take it no more. Yeah, well, you hope... It's going to be us against them. That's why you hope that it happens politically, Patrick, and I appreciate you very much, buddy. We'll see you... When I see you out, out there in the field somewhere, when you're on your sales thing, we'll plug in the iPhone and have a beer, all right? All right, buddy. All right, Bye-bye. man. Take care. Put on my iTunes for you. Jay Stewart, the Gray Falcon. Now, he is known only as... The Falcon Listen, people can... I know Millicent's on the phone. She's offended by what Patrick had to say about whites and blacks. But the reality is uh, people are tired of having to apologize for their existence. And you can you can talk all you want about uh, approaches, that kind of thing. But you you kind of got a sense of how people feel about this. And it doesn't it's not always uh, artful in terms of wh- wh- when you talk about it. But the reality is it's true. Jay Stewart that for some reason over the past 20 years white people have been in the situation where we have to apologize for everything that's not true yes it is <laughs> come on J- J- Jamie here's the thing and this is we talked about those people who backed all this crazy stuff and now attacking Trump and I totally agree with you all these national review people these people who got on that committee, I totally agree. The Tea Party, they pushed all this nonsense about that, and we said it was nonsense. But this is when Van, what Van Jones is doing, and this is why I walked away from the Tea Party. People are like, oh, here's Van Jones. This is one of the things that I see. When a black left-wing person says something that someone on the right likes, they throw it out there uncritically. You know why Van Jones is promoting that? Bernie Sanders people are saying the same thing. You know why? They want more progressivism. Fear of Trump is how they push their agenda. Right. Because Hillary Clinton is just selling kind of a middle-of-the-road kind of thing because that makes sense. I don't care about the black and white either. I care about removing big government-type operations. Right. And protectionism is big government. Let's have that debate. You know, get someone who's for it, get someone against it, and have an intelligent debate. When I hear Donald Trump talk, I don't hear him have any kind of critical. He what you said is, oh, he doesn't. We, he's not telling anyone how he's going to do it, but he's just convincing them. And now you're saying, well, he's the champion of the white male. Well, I don't think you're going to get thirty percent of the black vote if he, if the promotion for Donald Trump is he's saving the white male from American victimization. Well, no, I mean, that but I, but I think, but I think, Pat, like, but, but but people vote in right. But Jay, people vote individually, and that's Patrick's point of view. And and why is it? Yeah, why, why? No, 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 no. Why? Why? You're not going to hear me take saying that he's the champion for the white male. But but you hear Patrick saying that, and and for Patrick, it's an individual vote. It's 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 how he feels, and I don't know why that's worse than well, a black person that, saying that you know he's he's representing me. You know, like when he when they talk about Obama or somebody. Well, probably because people like Reverend Wright, and I disagree with a lot of things he said. Right, but let's be honest. One of the reasons why those guys said that is because he grew up at a time where he was not allowed to do things that other white people could do. Right. Now, I was of the genera- I was one of the people who said, hey, wait, let us live our lives. Don't jump in our ear and tell us every white person is that racist white man. That's something that people of my previous generation did that's wrong. I'll say that flat out. Right. But to suggest that, you know... I'm, I'm sorry, and I know we're still, Patrick was very eloquent, but what a lot of, what I heard is when he said, I'm a white male, and I'm paying 30% of my income. Well, and, and you were correct. You, you clarified and said there are minorities who do too. But the tone, if you combine what he's saying with, with Donald Trump, yeah, you're going to get minorities turning out in large droves. The problem is Van Jones realizes a lot of black people are not that economically progressive. And that's his angle. Plus the fact that they want to keep the tension there because Trump is good for ratings. Everyone in the media wants Trump to look as potentially successful as possible. Should he be written off? No. 
but he basically said that my whole campaign was fake last week. You know, he basically said, ah, you know, I, I, I don't mean it. His, one of his campaign aides said, oh, I may be open to cutting Social Security. So I think there's a disingenuousness that's setting in that is going to turn off a lot of white males as long as other people. That doesn't get covered either. Well, it depends. I mean, the on idea that. that he's like an honest guy. I don't really think that's holding up so much recently. Right. And I'm, but, you know, again, I think that when it comes to those evaluations, whether someone's honest or what, the problem has been, and unfortunately, that we have had two decades of dishonesty, both on the Republican side and the Democrat side. And unfortunately, what's happening is that you've got people who are jaded. And you've got people who are bored. You have people who are not believing words that are coming out of people's mouths. Even though those people might actually be pretty decent people, people have now gone into this absolute rejection mode. You're seeing it with the Democrats who support Bernie Sanders. And, well, and most are voting for Hillary Clinton. Well, yeah, but 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 the the exit polls in West Virginia, half of them said they'd vote for for Trump over Clinton. But that's just West Virginia. Yeah, I know. That's I'm, but not, that's not. See, that's the one of the things is we take these samples of this one place and go look. Yeah, West Virginia is a very different place than say California, or a very different place than Nebraska or whatever. Right. Most voters are voting for Hillary Clinton because they think she's a more. Everyone is not super disillusioned and angry. Most of us would prefer a government to do better, but I think the media exaggerates yeah. how angry everyone is. I don't hang out with a whole lot of people that, are, that say they're angry and hate America, and, I, and the white males that I hang out with don't feel oppressed as white males. Right, but, but here's the thing, though. The, even the word angry is something the media attaches to people who are not happy with their current state, because anger, when you say somebody is angry, that's a pejorative, and, 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 and it's designed to count somebody out as being simply emotional. But but the reality is that word angry isn't isn't a proper description of most of the Republicans who are coming out and voting for Donald Trump. I think angry is a word that the media invents and other people invent to, to basically uh, dismiss individuals. And, and it's, the people in the media are saying what the media is doing and creating that narrative. Well, so yeah. Look, Donald Trump has a chance because it's not that the, he's not getting negative press. But there's always somebody in some media outlet to dismiss it. I know lots of working class white males, and every single one of them thinks Donald Trump's an idiot. <laughs> I know a lot of white people, man, and a lot of them are working class, and a lot of them pay 25%, and they think Donald Trump, they're like, well, instead of being mad at Mexico, let's help Mexico, let's have some businesses in Mexico so people don't need to come over the border. And these are white working class males. Wait a minute. These are white. These these are males who are suggesting that the United States create a jobs program over in no, Mexico. No, 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 no. That's not what they. That's not what I said. What, what'd what you say? Saying then? is let's work with countries, not a jobs program from the government. We're talking about trade. We're talking about whatever kind of situation you can create, so that the people who are leaving Mexico because they can't get a job there will just stay in Mexico because they have employment there. But we so do have trade situation. with Mexico. I mean, well, look at NAFTA, for crying out loud. I, well, I understand that. This is just a basic sentiment. And see, that's the problem, is that Donald Trump can just say something, and we don't care how it works. But when someone disagrees with him, we want to be real critical and analyze it and go up. Right, but you that's just, just, you just, but, but, but you just, you just talked about how basic sentiment isn't real. And, that, and, you're, and no, you're actually I quoting somebody who has a basic sentiment about jobs in Mexico. I didn't say basic sentiment wasn't well, real. We, what I said was, you're suggesting that Donald Trump represents the white male, and that's a media construct. There's lots of white males that don't like Donald Trump. And again, I don't, I mean, I know a few that say that they like him, but most of those people are not that involved in, they're not in, that interested in policy. I know lots of white males that are like, that guy, come on, including a lot of the Republicans who yeah. don't want to vote for him because they don't want their movement associated with what they consider to be something that completely defies the concepts of conservative concepts for the sake of what they consider to be ethno-national sensationalism. Right. Well, that, but, that's, that, but that, that, you know, just because there's a 42-year-old white guy who actually says, finally, someone who represents me, doesn't mean he's some part of ethno-national group. I'm so tired of that dismissive... Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I don't know. I didn't know he was part of it. I'm talking about the, long, the overall perception. I'm not talking about him. Don't try to make what I said about that caller. I'm not... Well, what I'm, but, but, but we're well, talking what I'm about that. Is, 
most white males I know, all white males don't feel like this country has been oppressing them or turning their back on them. That kind of sound, it's just, that, that's one of the reasons why people are maybe associating Donald Trump's movement with ethno-nationalism. I'm not saying that black people are oppressed. I don't think I'm oppressed. But when I hear white people say, well, they feel like they're like having to bear the burden in the last hundred years, that just sounds like nonsense to black people who've, been, who've grown up in the 20th century seeing the things that had to be done just to get the nation to live up to its constitutional values in reference, in reference to black people in this decade. Now I would say I'm not oppressed. I don't think Hispanics are oppressed or white. I don't think anyone's oppressed on the basis of their color. Yeah. You hear white people say, oh, well, we have to pay so many taxes. Cause, I mean, that, that's certainly going to frame Donald Trump in that ethno-national context. Well, if you, wa- if you want to do that, I mean, but I, but I know many black people who support Donald Trump also. And so, I mean, what I'm saying is this whole thing. You ain't going to get 30% of the black vote. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Uh, who knows? I mean. You're not. Right. Okay. But, but maybe, maybe it, he doesn't need it. He's going to lose. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, that's fine with, that's, that's fine, Jay. But, but the, the reality is there are people who feel, and I don't feel oppressed. I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite sure feeling oppressed is the way. Is, is a proper description of these individuals who are saying, you know what? I keep seeing the numbers here. I keep seeing that fifty uh, percent of this country don't even pay any taxes, and here I am slogging through federal income tax. Right. They pay other taxes. Well, okay, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, and we and we see the federal income tax. That's a talking point. And, and there are people who are, uh, are upset about that. I mean, and uh, well, what does that have to do with them being white? It doesn't. I mean, it's but just that's so what you guys were talking about for ten minutes. Right, but but yeah, that's, that's but but that's, that's okay. You well, talk about race. You talk about something, and then when someone says something, oh, we're not talking about that. But but That's listen, what but listen, get away from That's right. But, but people don't vote for the Republican Party. Well, you talk no about principles. You talk about limited government. Then someone throws out some nonsense like Trump. Oh, that's awesome. Who cares about the principles? So it, that makes me feel like a fool for even getting involved in the Tea Party. If all of a sudden now it's like, oh, as long as you throw out something about a wall and something about Muslims, oh, he's great. Then he says, I don't even mean it. He just said he didn't mean any of that. Well, so what are we supposed to think about the guy other than something might be going on other than concept? He didn't say he didn't mean it. What he talks about is, listen, Donald Trump has been in the business world for decades now. And how you negotiate, if you read the art of the deal, it's all about aiming high. You, you start at the very top and you negotiate down. I, have, I, have, I don't think too. there's any question that... Do you that, get Bernie Sanders credit for that? Absolutely. I mean, because I because I actually I actually have a lot of like respect for Bernie popular. Sanders. I have a lot of. Re- I said the other day. I don't know why people dismiss this guy as some kind of seventy so- four year old socialist whack job. I said this guy is not a whack job. He's not a whack job. He's just another politician. Well, Same not what people want to hear. I, I, I don't I'm, understand why it's so impressive. No, I I actually believe I absolutely believe that Bernie Sanders believes what he says. It, it doesn't and, matter. And, and you know what? Another politician offering just. Stuff that he can't even explain how it works. Well, I, I mean, it's so impressive, right? Other than the sell ad time. Well, I don't know. He, I don't. I, th- I think that I think that he is. Um, I don't agree with him on a number of different levels regarding the economy, that kind of thing. But I have no doubt in my mind that Bernie Sanders believes every word that comes out of his mouth. I could care less what he believes. He's, he's wrong, and he's a politician, and he's a career politician, and he doesn't even have a strong command over the mechanics of what he's saying, like All Donald right. Trump. R- well, Which, that's fine. Is like. You know, I think black people should get some credit for not buying into that. And oh, I agree. The more, the, con- the more conventional, traditional American notion of, you know, uh, having some basic command over what you're talking about as, as a leader. Right. I don't understand why all of a sudden it's like, well, the white man has been forgotten. Well, I mean, but when, you keep you keep talking about black people all the time. No, no, you guys talked about it for like 15 minutes. No, we, we, did the guy put, put a perspective out there. He feels like to a certain degree that when it comes to, that, that, that he's considered to be a so guy who's a pariah. People, I can't talk about black people. No, no, I'm not, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm fine with you doing that, but, but don't act like every time somebody brings up the word white, that there's some kind of neo Nazi uh, nationalist. I didn't say that. I, I know, but you guys throw out that that term nationalism is, is being used. It's because uh, and, that's what he is. But, but, you know, what's, but what's wrong with being... 
you want tariffs, you're a nationalist. Right. Like, what's you, what's you wrong with being real PC? Right. But but you know the tariff thing. Reagan did it with Japan, so and, right. and and it doesn't mean that it's always going to be right. It doesn't mean it's always going to be at that level. It's a negotiating point. You put well, fear. Reagan didn't talk about it the way Trump did. Pardon me. Reagan didn't talk about it the way Trump did. He Trump just did it. What's the difference? Countries and that we lose a trade. You don't lose a trade when you trade with someone. Both nations are supposed to win. You can fix the deal if it's not fair. But that's a very, very um, big government progressive mentality that, oh, well, there's only so many jobs and there's only so much trade. The conservative libertarian consciousness, I thought, was that more business and more trade creates more wealth. Right, but, but, so but when you... More jobs and Mexico. But, Jay, when you're making deals where you have a deficit every time, who the hell... I mean, listen, you, you, you're... We you, invest you, that deficit into our assets. Listen, no, we're, we're, we continually devalue the dollar. I mean, Rand Paul talked that's about that's this kind of issues. stuff. Those aren't, those aren't. No, they're not the different issues. We they, they play into the economy. Talk to people who are in the business of exporting and importing. They'll, they'll tell you everything that, you need to know well, about I, it. I, that was, that's, that's them investing in our assets is not... Listen, not free trade is uh, the, the concept of free trade and uh, under which, which we're currently operating is not conservative. It's not libertarian. And, and 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 it's built it's built to benefit the the wealthiest among us and certainly the Republican Party and everybody who's contributing to the PACs and that's what's been going but on here. Tariffs do that too because tariffs make everybody pay more. It benefits. But again, tariffs would be a t- what 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 I'm saying is when you start talking about these kinds of things, you have to start talking about it from the very top and negotiate down. It's how things operate. And I'm and and listen, a forty five percent make up stuff. No, no, but a forty. Obama would have never gotten a pass like that. No way. It's a completely different standard for this guy, and it just looks it looks fishy to a lot of people. And I understand why a lot of Republicans are going to go with Gary Johnson or yeah. Peterson or somebody else. I understand and, it. I mean, I, some I, of them are going to vote for Hillary Clinton just because they're so mad at Trump. You want to see him lose. Right. Of course. I mean, I, I totally understand that, and I, I see it happening, and I could, I could read the tea leaves. I know people are, 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 are thinking about that kind of stuff, but I'm just saying that this, this idea somehow that, we, that Trump's not conservative. We haven't had a conservative Republican, first of all, barely running as, on the Republican ticket, but even, even, at, even in the White House ever. So why do we object to John Huntsman so hardcore or John McCain so hardcore? Obviously, we had... The- Oh yeah, variations of standards right. between the mint and you know. So right. obviously, there's a level in which someone so progressive they get rejected by yeah, the same Lauren Ingram and all these other people. the same people crabbing right now about how Trump's not a conservative have voted for non-conservatives almost every single election. They vote for them in Congress. They vote for them in the Senate. And there's no such thing as so. An, why were we talking about the concepts at all if we're willing to accept the Trump? Why well, did we say well, you know because what? forget it, forget at, the whole conservative ideology forget it let's just vote for no it's not a matter of forgetting it it's a matter of it's a matter of accepting that there are some people who aren't going to be absolutely pure donald trump makes like hillary clinton at times look like all right look like milton freeman all right buddy <laughs> I mean, all right i'll see you on the webs buddy gray falcon uh, dot thanks jay